Hello and welcome back to Linear Algebra. This is part 31 in this series and today we will show that inverses of linear maps are still linear. However, you already know, before we start, I really want to thank all the nice people who support the channel on Steady via PayPal or by other means. And please don't forget, as a supporter, you can always download the PDF version and the quiz for this video. Okay, then let's start talking about inverses of linear maps. So let's consider a map f that sends the vector space Rn to Rn. And then we know, if the map f is bijective, then there is also an inverse map in the other direction. And here please recall, we have already discussed that for linear maps associated to matrices. This means, in the case we have a matrix B here, the inverse map is given by the inverse matrix. Indeed, this is how we defined the inverse matrix. And now it might be interesting to extend this picture here with a second map and a second matrix A. Because then we can also look at the composition of both maps. So in fact, this is FA after FB. And also here, please recall, this is connected to the matrix product AB. Okay, and now the question is, what can we say about the inverse of this composition? Obviously, if you look at the picture, you already see the connection here. The inverse is simply given by the composition of both inverses here. In other words, we have FB inverse after FA inverse is equal to the inverse of FAB, which is again related to the inverse of this matrix here. In other words, we can conclude a very important fact for the matrix product. In other words, if we want to calculate the inverse of AB, we have to change the order in the matrix product. More concretely, this is B inverse times A inverse. So indeed, this is an important fact you definitely should remember. However, this was just the introduction of this video, because now we want to prove that inverses of abstract linear maps are also linear. Therefore, let's state that also as an important fact. So the starting point is that we have a linear map from Rn into Rn. So you already know a map is called linear if it conserves the linear structure of the vector space Rn. So it conserves the addition and the scalar multiplication. However, now in addition, we also assume that the map F is a bijective map. This means then that the map F inverse is well defined. But now the important conclusion is that F inverse is also a linear map. This means that F inverse also conserves the linear structure of the vector space. In some sense, this fact we have already seen in the matrix picture from above. However, now we want to give an abstract proof of this fact. In other words, we have to check what F inverse does to the scalar multiplication and to the vector addition. Therefore, I would say, let's start with the scalar multiplication. Hence, we start by putting the vector lambda times y into the function f inverse. And then, in the first step, we want to use the bijectivity of our function. This means we find exactly one vector x on the left hand side, such that f of x is equal to y. In other words, we can just look at the inverse element of y. However, now this means that f of x is now inside our function f inverse. And therefore, in the next step we can use that f is a linear map. This means we can pull in our scalar. So we have f of lambda times x. And with this we are almost finished because we can eliminate f inverse and f. They are inverses of each other, so what remains is lambda times x. And now if you remember that x is simply f inverse of y, we are finished. Because you see, then we have lambda times f inverse of y. So if you read it from left to right, you see we simply have pulled out the scalar factor lambda. So in conclusion, 
the scalar multiplication is finished. Hence, now we can do a similar thing with the vector addition. This means that now we put in two different vectors y and y tilde. And then, of course, we can do the same as before, which means we find a vector x and a vector x tilde here on the left hand side. Hence, then we have f inverse of f of x plus f of x tilde. And now the idea is the same as before. Now we are able to use the linearity of f inside. Roughly speaking, we simply push in the addition sign. So there we find x plus x tilde. And now you see again, f inverse and f will vanish. Or more concretely, this is now simply x plus x tilde. And then the reasoning is the same as before. x is f inverse of y and x tilde is f inverse of y tilde. And indeed, this is all we need to do. We can read it from left to right again and we see this is the additivity of our map f inverse. And because this works for all vectors y and y tilde, our proof is finished. Okay, and there you see, this is an important fact to remember because it helps you a lot. It tells you, if you have the linearity, you never have to check for the linearity of the inverse map. It's simply always given. Okay, then I would say, this is good enough for today. Let's talk more about linear algebra in the next videos. Therefore, I hope you have a nice day and I see you there. Bye.